In the last white timing video, we will describe how the importance of timing in a service. In this video, I'm going to show the image of why you need a PL based CDR. This timing image is a timing review from our white timing video. Can you identify whether a CK data sample 1 or the CK data sample 2 has a better timing margin? to get the right decision over L3. Think about your L image for 5 seconds. Bingo! The CK1 is not a good choice to differentiate a large 1 or large 0 easily. Not to mention the L3. So, the CK2 would be your best choice to identify large 1 or large 0 with a very low BL rate than the CK1 data sample. So, you realize that the data sample value by the CK2 is good for data sample information. Does that mean the CK1's data sample information is useless? Think about your timing images for 5 seconds. Right, the CK1 was not useful for data sample, but it provides the transition information and that's good for the edge sample. We may use the edge sample at CK1 to help the clock's timing phase recovery. As you can see, the clock recovery circuit image must include a phase detector PD for phase comparison, rule filter for decision filter, and VCO for the clock generation. Since the clock is free running, the feedback line to the phase detector is necessary to cross the loop and correct the clock phase to the right spot. In this situation, the edge sample of the data and clock are the input of the PD will provide the edge difference information to help the feedback loop and the clock align with the input data. Do you have the tracking images of the clock phase recovery? Good. Here are the tracking images of the clock phase recovery you must have. Case A shows that the clock phase is late, and the PD output VL then is filtered to VF to drive the VCO faster to case B. But the big phase lag in case A will then drive the VCO too fast, and then the CK phase is slightly early in case of B this time. So the PD output VE is then filtered to the VT to finally drive the VCO into tri-state and stay phase aligned at the case ideally. Again, during the phase alignment process, you only care about the phase transition and the information of both data and clock. If that's the case, how do we sample the data? Wow. That's obvious from the timing diagram again. As you can see, once the CK's rising edge phase is aligned at the data's transition, the CK's hour phase, which is CKB's rising edge phase, will be self-aligned at the middle of the data's transitions, which provides a good timing margin for both set time and hold time of the sample. So that's an easy add-on to the clock recovery image to fulfill the clock and data recovery under CK and DL. Are these clock and data recovery image good enough for the data sample self-aligned in condition? If not, what's wrong with it? Right, only the face information is not enough, and the limit capture range will cause the false lock, which means the clock rate is not the same as the big rate, and the CKB self align will fail. I would like you think about your own false lock image for 5 seconds. Here we go. The VCO's frequency will start at 0 and settle down at any frequencies if the PD's output early day or VEVL were balanced and the tri-state will drive the VCO into a false lock state. The three cast images shows you that the PD output can be balanced at the clock rate equals the bit rate, 
half bit rate and 1.3x bit rates. Unfortunately, there is no guarantee that the clock rate will be only locked to the bit rate, which we want, but locked to other rates cause lots of sampling error since the self aligned property does not apply anymore. What can we do? Bingo! Adding the frequency information and correction will eliminate the false lock issue. But how? Correct. As we discussed in the YPO video, once the phase is dark, such that the phase difference between the reference clock and feedback clock is fixed, the frequency of reference and the feedback clock is the same. Since the PO's phase frequency decoder PFD would have a very wide pulling range, the frequency of the CK ref would be the same as the one of a CK FB and the output. CK's frequency would be n times of a reference clock, which is well defined without any false lock risk. But how do we implement both frequency acquisition in the PO and phase acquisition in the CDR? Think about the PO based CDR images for 5 seconds. Bingo! Just combine both. Top PO and button CDR through the loop filter control voltage to pass the PO's frequency control information to the CDR such that the CDR's clock rate can lock to the bit rate exactly. So there is no false lock and the CDR can work properly. Then this PO based CDR seems straightforward, but there are a few assumption images here. Think about the P4 images for 5 seconds. Right, the first issue is the mismatch in both VCO's characteristic, that is output frequency versus control voltage. Any mismatch between the VCO1 and VCO2 could still generate different oscillation frequencies, even though the two VCOs share the same control voltage VC1 for frequency tuning. Second, as we mentioned in the white timing video, the data rate of a series link would have a certain frequency offset between the transmitted data rate and the receiver's local clock frequency. Unfortunately, then the frequency offset between the VCO1 and VCO2 cause a pooling phenomena, which could move the VCO1 away from the receiver data rate towards n times reference frequency. The pooling effect could be even worse if a spectrum clocking is required, such as in the SATA application. Lastly, the CDR's two VCO could occupy a big area if the LC tank PO was needed. If a two VCO's image were the issue in the PO based CDR, what can you do? Bingo! If the two VCOs were the issue, why don't you just apply a single VCO to mitigate the concern? The single VCO PO based CDR image may eliminate the mismatch, frequency pooling, and area issues. In addition, the dual loop can still have the frequency tracking loop to avoid the false lock, and the phase tracking loop will still be phase aligned with the input data. The lock detector or counter is used to ensure the frequency is crossed through the bit rate in the PO. Then the feedback loop will switch to the CDR's phase tracking mode and be locked to the input data. The last steel loop PO based CDR looks good. But do you have any P4 images? Great. The transition from the frequency tracking loop to the phase tracking loop would disturb the VCO's control voltage and then cause the VCO's frequency to drift. In addition, the frequency drift could be too big to phase lock. So, a smooth transition between tubes must be designed properly. Here are a summarized image 
of why you need a PO-based CDR. Without a PO, but only the PD in the CDR, the pooling range is narrow, and it's likely to have the false lock to several different bit rates. Then, the clock of the data sample cannot save a line and would not sample the input data in the middle of the eye. Of course, lots of errors may occur. To make this PO based CDR is needed, which is a PO for the frequency tracking. But the extra VCO in the PO would cause a mismatch, pooling, and chip area concern. The last single VCO during PO based CDR can avoid false lock and keep the phase tracking well with little concern in the frequent drift and the transition between two loops. Again, the frequent drift concern could be mitigated easily by careful design and verification. So hopefully, the PO based CDR image will be your circuit image with lots of insight here. Thanks for watching. Before you go, if you are benefiting from those circuit images, I would love to hear your feedback, and please share your comments down below. Lastly, please share the video link with people who may be benefiting from it.